The value of an idea lies in using it. This quote was by Thomas Alva Edison, the inventor of the light bulb. Innovation is the unrelenting drive to break the status quo and develop a new uh, where a few dare to go. Innovation refers to the creation of new things and the expertise involved brings to light the merit of a few ordinary individuals who dared to go into the places where everybody was whining for their not so good situations or circumstances. Today, I am here to talk about few such ordinary individuals who gave the best which they could to their life and their career and they emerged as the leading business tycoons of the present world. About Ratan, Ta about Ratan Tata, I would say that I believe that I knew a little too much. Dhirubhai Ambani uh, gave me the drive and the curiosity to read more about him because I didn't know much about Reliance and Industries. So I went ahead with Dhirubhai Ambani and here I begin with my presentation. The Early Life of Dhirubhai Ambani Dhirubhai Ambani was one of the sons of Hirachand Gordhanbhai Ambani who was a village school teacher. This itself tells us the very humble beginnings of Dhirubhai Ambani and his life. He was, he did not belong to a very rich Ambani had very humble beginnings. He did not belong to a very rich or supremely uh, illustrious family. Uh, he went to local schools and he, his schooling was also from very humble local village teachers. His masters were village headmen. The founding of Reliance Industries. Now this one man whose education in itself is a matter of obscurity. There are not enough evidences to which uh, schools and uh, places that he went to. But this is the man who went on to... This is the man who went on to invent the Reliance Industries. Reliance Industries is the leading business tycoon industry that we know today. And Dhirubhai Ambani is the founder of it. Reliance Commercial Corporation, which became Reliance Industries, was set on 8th of May 1973 and was the highlight of Dhirubhai Ambani's career. Dhirubhai Ambani, before being a part of the Reliance Industries, worked under different businessmen but he was not satisfied with the kind of work that he did for them. Later, he decided to continue working independently and went on to become the head or the father of the capitalist market in India. For this, the only thing that Dhirubhai Ambali required was drive, innovation, creativity and ideas. His career had also been embroiled into several controversies that we see here. Uh, there were several charges against him uh, in the National Stock Exchange in Bombay and other places. They charged him for fraudulent uh, income and all of this and illegal and black money chains. But Dhirubhai Ambani had always came, came out of it with clean checks. This also tells us that when a businessman or any person in any field works on the tenets of honesty, uh, hard work, it is something in in the meantime or eventually it is acknowledged by people. We talk about the posthumous, uh, the posthumous uh, career of Dhirubhai Ambani. There are few men uh, in our country and the world who did not rise to fame when they were living. Dhirubhai Ambani was one of them. His uh, founding of the Reliance Industries and his founding of several other uh, uh, entrepreneur uh, institutions that he founded and he instituted, 
they did not come into uh, a lot of consideration in the time when he was living. But post his death, Ambani and uh, his sons were the ones who took forward his career and the world realized, the nation most importantly realized the contribution of Dhirubhai Ambani to Indian society and the birth of reliance. Uh, there, uh, there have been several web series, uh, pictures, motion films that have been created on this personality to learn about his life. There was one such film uh, called The Polyester Prince because Reliance Industries before coming into uh, before coming into the Indian market was a small textile tenure and Dhirubhai Ambani was the polyester prince of the market. Polyester is, polyester is a type of fabric. And Dhirubhai Ambani found it, founded it and he worked in those textiles. But this web series was claimed uh, on several grounds, legally claimed on several grounds and it never got released. But then there was this another film that got created, Ambani and Sons in 2010. And uh, if you if we go on the internet, we will find that uh, Dhirubhai's sons, Mukesh Ambani and Anil Ambani were personally interviewed for all of these and they gave very relevant uh, and up-to-date information regarding the making of this web series. So I would request everybody to watch this film once. I haven't done it yet. I am surely going to do it. Um, and here, when I come to the end of my presentation, I would end on a very uh, motivating note, if I may say. We learn from the life story of Sri Dhirubhai Ambani that one must think big. Because when we think big, we give ourselves the food to build our drive and ambition, our background, place of origin, humble dwellings, humble beginnings are not the ones which live for life with us. But what stays forever is our, is our hard work, is our will to continue in the face of adversities, even in the face of adversities. So, uh, major letdowns or small uh, inconveniences in life should not make one like controversies in the life of Dhirubhai Ambani never stopped him to do something that he wanted to. So I would end my presentation here by saying that when you think big, you plan big and you are able to execute it. So one must live their lives with their heads held high and one must continue to achieve their goals that they wish to and one day will surely achieve success. Thank you everyone. On Dhirubhai Ambani, Indian business magnet. So I would, uh, I would be fo focusing uh, mainly on uh, these three things. Life of Dhirubhai Ambani, challenges faced by him and his co contribution to the nation. A man with a man with humble beginnings took the world by storm with his intelligent and innovative mind. He is considered to be the sole reason that changed the, see, the scene of Indian industry and was a very successful capitalist. With the knowledge about the stock markets and how it can impact an Indian economy, he put India on a global map with his endeavor. He is considered as a business tycoon for his economic prominence and the power he holds. The real name of Dhirubhai Ambani was Dhirajlal Hirachand Ambani. He was an Indian businessman who founded Reliance Industry. Ambani took, uh, Ambani took Reliance Public in 1977. In 2016, he was honored posthumously with the Padma Vibhushan, India's highest civilian honor for his contribution to trade and industry. Ambani faced numerous accusations of market manipulation, tax evasion and cronism. Coming to the life of Dhirubhai Ambani. Coming to the life of Dhirubhai Ambani, born to Hirachand Gordon Bai Ambani and Jamna Ben Ambani, on December 28, 1932, in his mother's native place, Chowar in Junagar state under the British Raj, which is now in Gujarat, India. Belonging to the Mood Baniya community, like his father, who was a school teacher in the village, 
he was one of, he was one of the three sons and who had one sister his brother are raman ramanikalal ambani and saurabh patel and his sister tirochna bey dhirubhai ambani lived a modest life with his parents and siblings he attained his primary education from the bahadur kanji school and even in his in his younger years he was righteous and possessed leadership qualities one such instance is during his youth he participated in the protest against the nawab of his own state junagadh who was planning to join the muslim clan in pakistan who is independent at the age of 16 in the year 1948 dhirubhai ambani left for work in a beast and cooperative in port to eden yemen he worked there alongside his brother ramanik lal as a clerk in a company that was considered the largest he worked there alongside with brother ramanik lal as a clerk in the company that was considered largest transcontinental trading firm in the 1950s and and in the east of swiss egypt and in his course of work he learned trading and accounting he sharpened his skill over the years his business acumen was evident even in those early days as he made strides to achieve his ambition of making more money the silver bullion which is the metal in bulk that was very popular then was widely sold He went to a step. He went a step further and thought of selling the precursor of the bullion by melting the silver. He sold the pure silver at a high price too. He was truly a financial wizard. His friends too described him as friendly, easy to talk to, with good nature and a cheerful personality. And the drive and ambition in him were always prominent. He worked with the Shell Oil agent for a few years. and at the age of 23 in the year 1955 dhirubhai ambani tied the knot with kokila bey who was 21 at the time from jamnagar in the later years kokila bey always spoke of her husband support that got her through tough times always from family in india and now and how she challenged the time spent in those early days Now talking about the challenges uh, which Dhirubhai Ambani faced in February 1986, Dhirubhai Ambani suffered a major stroke for the first time. Unfortunately, his hand got paralyzed, so he handed over the control of Reliance Industry to his son. On June tw- on June 24, 2002, he again suffered from a stroke for the second time and got admitted to Breach Candy Breach Candy Hospital, Bombay. Even after the admission, his health kept declining, and India lost its <coughs> strength. Dhirubhai Ambani faced many challenges and risks, like leaving the country for employment, risking his job to start new business, and so on. <coughs> Coming to the contribution he uh, made to the nation, the Reliance industry is one of the biggest contribution to the GDP of India. Dhirubhai Ambani always wanted India to become an economic superpower and Reliance Industry Limited is greatly contributed to his dream. Reliance Industry Limited always employs more than 195,000 people. A movie by the name Guru was released on 12 January 2007 with Abhishek Bachchan as the main character. The movie book was inspired by the life of Dhirubhai Ambani. The life story of Dhirubhai Ambani teaches us that to become successful, the most important ingredient are hard work and willpower and self confidence, and these are more important than capital, education, and support. In 2016, Dhirubhai Ambani was also honored with the second second highest civilian award, Padma Vibhushan, after many years post his death. for his excellent contribution to india's market and its growth so i would like to conclude my presentation by saying that dhirubhai ambani truly embodies greatness and humility in equal measure even after achieving so much uh, wealth and fortune he celebrated his root 
and took pride in them. It is not easy to start from scratch and building an empire which lasts several generations. With support from his family, he was unstoppable. India takes pride in an icon like him that comes to him. Thank you. My name is Swati and I am from Vyodas Political Science. So, Mr. Sethi. And today I have this privilege to stand before you all and talk about a very visionary leader, one of the great entrepreneurs, uh, Mr. Ratan Tata. So, it's quite impossible that you haven't heard of his name or haven't heard about Tata Groups. Uh, Ratan is truly an icon in the world and uh, he has achieved almost everything. He's a great philanthropist and industrialist and uh, he had contributed or devoted his complete life for the advancement of people, uh, advancement of the technology and for the services of the people. Uh, he, has, uh, uh, he was born in 1937 and completed his education in 1955 from New York and uh, later in 1991 he has joined the Tata Group after the death of J.R.D. Tata. Um, Mr. Ratan Tata had uh, taken uh, Tata Enterprises to the world's biggest and most respected enterprises of the world and uh, with its 30 plus companies uh, from 100 countries and operating from 100 com companies and employing over 700,000 people across the globe and generating revenue for dollar 100 billion thousand. Uh, so this is a very huge number and industries from steel to tea, everything is covered by the Tata Groups. I like to describe uh, one incident here, Tata Cancer Hospital in Bombay, uh, which examines nearly every child who comes in Bombay, uh, who comes with a complaint of cancer in Bombay, is examined by them. And if they feel they can cure it, they give them free treatment. And this is how Tata are known as great philanthropists. Uh, one more thing, uh, in UK on Fact 6 2018, uh, Prince Charles organized one uh, uh, award ceremony and that was, uh, and Ratan Tata was invited there for philanthropy award, lifetime achievement for philanthropy. Uh, but everything was said, it was organized for auspicious British Asian press, but Ratan Tata didn't came there. And the reason was, two of his daughter, Tango and Tito, they fall terribly ill and he chose not to come. So this, the, that's the great man Tata is. Uh, another uh, example, at one of the convocation of a school, he told fresh management graduates uh, uh, nearly after gathering all his experience in the corporate world for over 60 years, he told them don't count your wealth and don't count your successes. With the amount of money that you have in your bank account or the number of property that you accumulate or the number of relationships that you have made, uh, this is not your wealth. Your real wealth is how many lives you have enriched throughout your, throughout your journey of life and how many ideas did you develop. So this is what uh, Ratan Tata actually said and uh, I would like to conclude it with his uh, most provoking quote, none can destroy an iron but its own rust can, likewise none can destroy a person but his own mindset can. Thank you. Tata consultancies 
services and more over 100 plus companies are there in India. Currently, Tata is India's one of the most famous and successful oldest company. Tata company didn't become successful over one night. It took them 200 years. Ratan Tata is an industrialist, investor, philanthropist. And he received most famous civilian awards of the India. Like Padma Sri, Padma Vibhushan. And got the title of the sir from the UK on a night. Under his chairmanship, the Tata company grows in was 14 times. And he contributed 60% of the revenue for the services of the nation, like Bolivia. And Ratan Tata started many startups, but major of it failed, like most famous is a nano car. But Ratan Tata didn't took it as a product. He says this as a no. and he stated Come as a try everything and fail fast. And he took it as it is a stepping stone, stepping stone for his future. And at last, I want to quote one line of the Ratan Tata. I don't believe in taking right decisions. I take decisions and then make them right. Thank you. Good morning teachers and students present here. I am I Lakshmi Sharma from BA History Honors. <coughs> on behalf of my group is going to deliver a presentation on Ratan Tata, one of the richest, uh, richest businessmen of India. My presentation includes introduction, life, challenges of Ratan contribution. Introduction. Ratan Naval Tata is an Indus, Indian businessman and former chairman of Ratan Tata Sons. He was also the chairman of Tata Group from 1990 to 2012, serving all also an interim chairman from October 2016 through February 2017. He continues to have its charitable trust. Uh, for poor children's orphanage and disabled through his charity. He is also one of, uh, for his philanthropical works, he is one of the most well known and respected business, industrial businessman in India. He was ranked at 421 on the list of richest India. These are some pictures of early life of Ratan Tata. Early life. Ratan Tata was born on 28 December 1937 in Bombay, India. Ratan Tata father name was Naval Tata and mother name was Sumi. At the age of 7, Ratan Tata parents were separated and he was raised by his uh, grandmother Nawaz Bai. From his childhood, he was interested in the cars. From, uh, he also played an instrumental role in the business expansion of popular cars including the Tato, uh, Tata Nano and Tata Indica. These are some challenges faced by Ratan Tata. The Tata uh, despite becoming the future chairman of the Tata Group, he began uh, his career at the Tata Steel Division where he worked along the blue collar workers, reduced uh, JLR sales, put pressure on Tata Motors because of above mentioned reasons. Ratan Tata always believes in taking risk. He is also uh, known as risk taker. He thinks that life is not uh, lived unless one takes chances and learns how to survive the odds of new challenges. He made some contribution. Ratan Tata had built a large part of his property of, for charitable trust. His vision inspired the steel and power industries in India, set the foundation for technical education and helped country leapfrog into ranks of industrial nations. The Tata Nano and the Tata Indica automobiles were conceived and built under his leadership. Ratan Tata received the Padma Bhushan in 2000 and Padma Vibhushan in 2008, the third and the second highest civilization uh, 
honor awarded by his government of india he was work for uh, social welfare education and cancer hospital for the first time science and technology thank you